All right, how's it going everyone? Uh, it's time for another iOS 18 video. Uh, today we're gonna be going over uh, iOS 18 beta 6 <clears throat> and the various changes that are contained within. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing that's changed <clears throat> is involving the control center again. Uh, so there's now a capture section uh, that contains the settings or toggles rather for the camera scanning of a qr code and the magnifier so if we go into control center here and customize you can see right here there's a the capture section again that says camera scan code and magnifier are contained within that so just a little bit of a added organization feature or change rather uh the next thing is again in control center and that is there is now a dedicated bluetooth toggle so if we search for bluetooth see there is a bluetooth icon now uh, we can click on it and add it to our menu straight right there now the bummer thing with this is that it does not work in the way that we were all expecting it to um, all this does is disables or enables the bluetooth setting uh temporarily so you can see we go into the main section here it says bluetooth is still on it's just not connected and then if we tap that again go back here it says now bluetooth is on and connected so unfortunately this dedicated toggle does not directly fully turn off uh the bluetooth function of the actual phone uh which is something that's how i wanted it to function but unfortunately apple did not make it that way and i would also expect apple to add a dedicated wi-fi toggle in the same way as this in a future upcoming beta uh, so we'll see how that goes at some point. Uh, this next one revolves around uh, Microsoft apps. Uh, so all these apps here, uh, say Bing, Word, and Outlook. Uh, in Beta 5, uh, the Microsoft apps did not support dark mode on their icons. However, now in Beta 6, it seems like something has been updated along with uh, Apple and Microsoft. Uh, in the fact that their app icons now support dark mode. So if I go over here and go into dark mode, select that, go to dark. You can see now all three of those Microsoft apps uh, have a functioning uh, dark mode for their icon, uh, which is great. Uh, the more app icons that can be updated to support the dark mode uh, will just make the overall experience much more consistent uh, because you can see still right there, uh, some of the icons are not dark mode compatible and strangely enough the or the Apple Store app For some reason still does not support dark mode on it um, But anyway, I'm, I'm assuming Apple will fix that at some point But yeah, so some apps still do not support it and same thing with Waze right there So Waze is also still not updated uh, for a proper dark mode look for the icon Okay, again, this is also referring to the icon customization. So uh, the tinting of the icons uh, in relation to widgets, it works quite a bit better. So if we go over into tinting, you can see that the widget kind of changes a lot more smoothly uh, to correspond to the current color of tint you have selected. And then you can go again back and forth between that, and it seems to work pretty well now. Um, and just the widgets take on the tinted color a lot more quick and a lot nicer to look at. And the next thing involving the icon tinting is now, it's more uh, beyond actual the icon tinting. It's basically just the overall customization of the icons uh, in terms of dark mode, light mode, and the tinting again as well. Um, they will now be customizable to each different wallpaper customization you have set. So for example, the current wallpaper that I have set, which is this kind of blue iOS 18 type of wallpaper, currently has the dark mode icon uh, set to it now if I go over to customize and slide over to this one that's more of an orange color jump in slide up you can see now that one has retained the customization uh, that I had previously so this particular red orange type of wallpaper saved the icon tint color that I had selected so if we go back in here and do this again so customize let's tint it to a completely different color uh, let's say a deep blue color here. So now the icons are blue. If I go back, slide over to my other wallpaper, 
See, now the icons are back to just standard dark mode. And then I go back again, jump over to the orange color, go up. Now they've retained that blue color that I had selected previously. So it's pretty cool that you can save uh, icon customization for each individual wallpaper selection that you have uh, customized. Uh, it just is really nice so you don't have to redo your customization options each and every time you change your wallpaper. So that's really cool. Uh, there's now a change in wording uh, within the music app. Uh, for some reason, uh, in my music app, it does not show up. But under the music app, uh, you can see at the top tab bar down here, it, there should be a button called Browse, but for some reason there's not, and I'm assuming it has to do with not being signed up for Apple Music. Uh, but basically what's happened is that the button at the bottom bar here that says Browse has been now renamed to New. Uh, and the same thing I'm assuming will happen to the podcast app as well, because if we go over to the podcast app, this is where you'll kind of get an idea to see what I'm talking about. So down here there is a Browse button. Uh, that again should be in music but for some reason it's not but this browse button right here in music has been renamed to new and so again like i said in this podcast app i assume this icon will be updated to say new as well uh, to just be consistent across the different apps uh, next is the album section within photos has been changed and you can see some of the different designs here you can see the, uh, the new splash screen changing the design of the photos app to a more familiar grid layout which is way more of what i prefer uh but yeah if we scroll down to the album section you can see here the albums are now separated whereas in beta 5 as you can see here uh, they were all contained within one little box uh, that had all of your albums contained within that uh, but yeah, no, in Beta 6 now, all of these albums are separated into their own individual little cards that you can slide back and forth between. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Next up, small change involving the settings app uh, for the password and autofill section. So as you can see on the side of the screen here, uh, what it looked like in Beta 5. Uh, and then right here in Beta 6, it kind of just has a little bit of a key icon with some dots below it. Uh, so just a really small icon update there, nothing too major. Uh, this next one involves the stolen device protection option. And basically this is just saying that, so some people are saying that the toggle or option to have that is no longer available for them after updating to beta 6. But for me in beta 4, six uh the stolen device protection button is still there as you can see at the bottom here um it's off currently but it does still show up so but for some odd strange reason uh some people on certain phones uh that setting is disappearing not entirely sure why so that's apparently a bug that needs to be fixed at some point before the final release and another thing involving settings is the vehicle motion cues option here so this here so show vehicle motion cues uh there's a new little icon that shows up when you activate or deactivate it so if i activate it here you can see the icon shows up and then you turn it off and it shows the little icon there previously it just showed a big white um notification panel at the top of the screen that did not have a little car icon next to it. Um, but now it has a little car icon with some blue dots next to it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this next one I can't really show because it'll uh, mess up my screen recording. Um, but standby mode seems to not always function for all people. Uh, for me, it seems to have been working okay right now. I haven't experienced any glitches with the standby mode. However, some people are reporting that when they use standby mode, it either won't activate at all, or they can't edit uh, the various options within it once uh, standby has been activated. So that's another thing that's been kind of ongoing uh, standby since iOS 18 beta 1. Uh, it's been off and on stable and unstable, so it goes back and forth between that. Not sure why. Uh, so whatever Apple's doing, they keep kind of breaking standby and then they'll fix it and then they'll break it again and then they'll fix it again. So 
hopefully by the final release that gets uh, sorted out. So that's basically it for the notable changes in beta 6. Um, I would expect beta 7 to show up somewhere around next week. So currently uh, we're on August 14th. Uh, beta 6 came out on the 12th. Um, so I would expect probably beta 7 to show up right around the 19th or the 20th. Maybe the 26th at the absolute latest. And I also presume that we may have the final, the release candidate within potentially the next three weeks. Uh, because it is slated for Apple to start sending invites out for their iPhone 16 event. Uh, somewhere towards the beginning of September with the event date somewhere being the second week of September is what is being rumored. So that's what to expect for upcoming beta releases. And yeah, uh, that's basically it again for this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's greatly appreciated. Hit that subscribe button as well if you're not already subscribed. It helps out the channel greatly. And yeah, again, with that all being said, hope you guys have enjoyed. And I will see you guys in the next one.